So today I'm looking at a knife book that I picked up off of Amazon. Uh, this was $13 and change. It was a somewhat of an impulse purchase. I was actually on Amazon for something else. Then I started looking up different things and I was thinking about different knife related books. Kind of wanted to see what was out there these days, if there was anything new. And I stumbled across this. Um, this is the Shooter's Bible Guide to Knives uh, second edition. And Shooter's Bible books are quick reference material for all kinds of things gun related, obviously. It's called a Shooter's Bible. So you can see, I mean, they have specific books on different subjects. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned before, most people who are into guns, they're into knives a little bit. They just kind of go hand in hand, guns and knives. So anyway, I was specifically interested in this because the cover featured, you know, some more modern stuff. And I have a ton of different uh, reference material for knife related content, but a lot of it is vintage things. A lot of reference book for old, you know, slip joints, a lot of stuff from the 80s, 90s. Um, not so much, a lot of stuff in the last decade or so. So I thought I'd take a chance on it, you know, for 13 bucks. Uh, and overall, I'm happy. It is a very cool book. There is some, um, you know, information on different companies, which would be very helpful if you're new uh, to knives. My only disappointment really with this is that like, well, first off, let me let me go over the front. <laughs> Once we get into the, inside the book, I'll tell you the only thing I was disappointed really. So um, it's suggesting that it is a complete guide to fixed and folding blade knives for hunting, survival, personal defense, and everyday carry. Okay. Um, <laughs> the bottom photo specification and prices. Yes, there's a lot of that. In fact, that's what most of this book is, is like a picture of a knife, the full specs on the knife, and the MSRP price on it which is pretty good. I mean, if you're new to knives, it gives you a wide range of different type of, of stuff to choose from and generally what they're gonna sell for. Now, if you don't know MSRP standing for a manufacturer's suggested retail price, that's retail. That means if you're buying this knife directly from the company that makes it, that's where you're gonna pay. It's the highest price you're probably gonna pay for any individual item. Um, but as most of us know, most of us purchase things from knife dealers, you know, so you're gonna get less of a price. So in other words, all the prices in here seem inflated. You can get it for that price or definitely less, in most cases less. All right, just something to keep in mind when you see MSRP prices. Um, hundreds of photos and brands, yes, that's true. The stories behind the knives, yeah, there's some cool stories here and there. I do like that there's a little blurb on each, you know, company and factories and stuff like that uh, before each section, you know. Uh, and tips for buyers and collectors, which there are. So, without showing the entire book, just kind of kind of flip through here a little bit. So there's a lot of this where, again, you're seeing pictures of the knives, very good high resolution color photos, which is a nice reference, and then all the specs on each individual knife that they're showing. That's really cool, all right? And then obviously here, this is uh, featuring Topps Knives, this page, and it is nice that they give you a little history on the company, which is very cool. So like I said, there's a lot of stuff to learn, whether you've been into knives for a long time or today's your first day getting into the hobby, it is a very useful book in that sense. Um, and then it's a good reference for knives that you happen to already own. Maybe you want to revisit it. Maybe, like I've had this particular steel wheel knife before, this neck knife. Uh, maybe I forgot how much it weighs. So there it is. There's all the specs, you know. Uh, the one disappointing thing that I was trying to get out, like, oh, here's a perfect example. Here's Spyderco, right? Let's go to the beginning. So, Spyderco, right? We got this whole long story on Spyderco. And when we look at the knives that they're offering for information, a um, couple bird knives. Um, the knives here, it's just interesting to me that they don't have like a Delica or Endura. That's kind of what started the company. Um, those were staple knives back in the 90s. I don't even see like a paramilitary two, you know, Spyderco Police. They're, they're very cool models here. And I do, I can appreciate that they're newer models, but like I said, for someone who's new to knives, um, there's, like I said, in each brand, there's just uh, some of the staple knives that I grew up with. They're just nowhere to be found here. So it's a negative to me. It's not that big of a deal at all. Uh, but it's just like within brand after brand, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more of the uh, oddball knives, which could be looked at as a very positive, cool thing. These are knives that most people don't see. But again, a complete guide. You would think that they would show some of the more popular models. That's all I'm saying. Um, it's not that big of a negative. Overall, I do like the book, like I said. There is a ton of pictures. I mean, even if you're not super into like the specs, like <laughs> depending on your level of obsession with knives, uh, you if nothing else, you can flip through this and look at all the pictures and go, oh, that's a cool knife, that's a cool knife. If you happen to see one that you really like and you're really interested in it, then obviously you can refer to the specs, the MSRP, and then go, okay, I'm gonna go find that online and buy it, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, just took a total, total gamble with this in uh, 
you know, seeing if I would like the book. I, it's, every knife related book is always good to have, um, especially because I do actually use them for reference all the time. I'm always slipping through and, and seeing what, uh, you know, what old knives had to offer. And I, again, for specifications and things, I mean, I'm stopping here. I went back because I saw Cold Steel, right? So again, blurb on Cold Steel. When you think Cold Steel, what do you think of, right? I personally, the Tylite, the Voyager series, not on this page. Uh, flip it over. Uh, no Tylite, no Voyagers, right? Well, I shouldn't say that. There is a, uh, a Tanto Voyager here, but not the traditional clip point Voyager, right? Uh, then we have a couple of their oddball daggers and stuff. And Tomahawks. And we're on to CRKT. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like CRKT, let's see what they have here, right? Uh, some very cool, more modern folders. But when I think CRKT, the very first knife that I think of is the M16, which is sold at Walmart, which thousands and thousands of people started off with their knives from Walmart. Nothing wrong with that at all. You're 13, 14 years old, you want to get into knives, you don't have $500, you go down to Walmart, what do they have in the case? A bunch of CRKT M16s, among other knives, like buck knives. Um, that is a staple to me. So like in the back of my mind, I'm just, as I flip through, like I said, uh, company after company, I'm thinking, where are the staples? However, on the flip side of that, it is cool that you are seeing knives that maybe you don't normally see. So there's two ways to look at it. But anyway, uh, yeah, got case stuff. I mean, they, they do a very good range of knives here as well. And what I do, I can uh, add to this. Here's some Bear Ops uh, Val Songs. I can add to this is that they do show some uh, off brands too that a lot of people don't probably know of. So that's also nice. So yeah. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to show you the whole book right now. If you guys are interested, of course, you can pick one up. Um, but I was happy with it. It was a good purchase. Like I said, I mean, my critique on them not showing the staples from each company, that's just my critique. It could be looked at either way. Like I said, the positive on that is that they're showing you a lot of stuff that you might not have ever seen before. That's really cool. Uh, but for me, looking at this as maybe like someone who wants to get into knives, uh, they buy this book and they start looking through it. It's cool to see all different, you know, random models, but they should know about some of the more popular models that sell the best. You know, some of these knives that sell the most for these companies, they obviously should be added in here so people know about them. Uh, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I'm critiquing it because that's what I do. I critique things. Right? Anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the uh, comment section, um, you know, if you guys uh, are into collecting knife books, knife material and stuff, magazines. I keep all that stuff because I do actually reference it. And occasionally, if I have a little bit of free time and I just want to read something, I'll grab a random 1996 issue of Blade Magazine or something and look back. And it's a cool blast in the past. Sometimes I'll run across stuff I, I don't remember from back in the day or forgot about. You know, it's just, it's interesting to me anyway. Again, I just want to, you know, point out the fact that all the prices in here are going to be on the high end. All right, so most of the knives, let me pick a random knife here. Let's give you an example. Um, all right, so let's see this uh, Case Hunter, right? So they're saying, you know, MSRP is $125. You're not going to necessarily have to pay $125 for this knife. You could probably find this knife for $75 or $80, okay? Just as a reference. So if you happen to get this book and you're like, wow, these are all expensive, they're not as expensive as you're, you're looking at there. Uh, but I do get it. Dealer's prices do change quite a bit. So putting MSRP prices are not only easier for an author to research, but it's also worst case scenario. So if you say it's $65 or $70, and then they find it's $90, then they think that the information's wrong. So I, I totally get it. In other words, you can only be pleasantly surprised if you're thinking you're gonna pay MSRP. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Let me know down in the comment section, do you buy and collect knife books? Uh, or maybe for another hobby. If you're into guns, I know a lot of gun guys love gun books and, and so forth. So tell me your favorite hobby and tell me if you're into collecting books pertaining to that hobby. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video.